How's it going guys? Sean here, and we're finally getting to the steel video we've all been waiting for. What is the world's toughest powdered metallurgy stainless steel? Now, notice what I said there. I said stainless, and I said powdered metallurgy, okay? Because there's definitely going to be tougher steels than these. Again, from the earlier videos, you guys remember, I promised we would get this testing done here in March. March has come. I've been putting this off for a bit, but we finally got to it, and we've got some rough ground test blades. They're not properly finished or anything like that, but there's no point in doing that because we're going to wreck these things. So we have, if you guys remember, we've got CPM-154, we've got S35VN, and we've got LMAX. Now, if you talk on the forums or any of that kind of stuff, you'll notice that everybody says, oh, LMAX is the toughest. LMAX is going to be the toughest. Oh, LMAX is the toughest. But if you ask why, it's a lot like asking why there's electrolytes in Gatorade and what they do. People just say, well, it just does. <laughs> so people don't actually know. And so we're actually going to test and we're going to see what's going on. Here's the problem with the testing and here's a little bit of a disclaimer about the testing. There's no way we can possibly learn from one test what the truth of the matter is because there's so many variables to account for. So we're going to do this the best we can, but just understand the limitations of what I have here. First off, you guys remember the first problem we encountered is that the LMAX was a little bit thinner on the blade stock than we had on the CPM-154 and the S35VN. But we've been able to counter that by just getting this guy right here. You can see we've got a little bit of a really high flat saber right here. I've actually left this a little bit thicker. So actually we're about 90 thousandths at the spine here, and we're closer to about... 87, 88 thousandths on the spines of these guys right here. So we've been able to negate that fact that that wasn't a big issue. The real problem is the fact that the LMAX got much, much harder with me trying to shoot for the 6162, the sweet spot. And these guys over here simply just did not get as hard. So the LMAX is going to be 6263 HRC. These are all sent to Brad at Peter's Heat Treat. Uh, this one right here, we're going to be at the S35VN, we're going to be at 61 HRC, so this is going to be the softest, and the CPM-154 is actually at 62 HRC, so I thought that was interesting. So it's kind of like, well, whatever you do with the testing, it doesn't matter because LMAX, of course, if it does fail, then it's because it was harder, you know, is that, that's what people will say, and sure, you know, I can't argue anything about that, but... Listen, you know, I did the best I could here to get these things sent out and heat treated. I followed through on my promise, and it took a year to actually get these things made with money out of my own pocket. So it's just another data point. And I'm, I'm honestly just curious to see what's going to happen from testing anyways. So the testing is not botched, but we'll just have another data point. And, you know, if we want to check some stuff out in the future, then, yeah, we can build on top of this test right here. So a funny thing happened, actually, in the year between this testing and a lot of new steels have come out. And so I'm arguing about what's going to be the toughest powdered stainless steel. Well, 2017, we had Vanix come out. This is one of my finished knives. And Vanix is showing to be actually the toughest powdered metal G stainless steel. In fact, Udelholm, uh, from my talking with Chad Kelly, who was like the Vanix master, apparently Udelholm states that this material is actually 25% tougher than the LMAX steel right there. And from my little uh, edge stability testing where I whack it on really hard stuff, this Vanek steel has actually showed itself to be incredibly tough and sharpens very, very easy. Even though we have basically the same vanadium content in S35VN, man, this stuff sharpens like a beast. So interesting. Uh, so we don't even have a, a Vanex blade here in the lineup, and to be honest, we probably won't because it's about 40 bucks just for one piece, and as well as we have to get it heat treated and all that stuff, so uh, it's just very interesting. These seals are much, much cheaper. Uh, LMAX, for instance, cost me about, I want to say $17, so that kind of puts you in perspective, uh, the cost of things, you know, especially with LMAX already being regarded as very expensive steel. All right, guys, let me tell you how these blades were actually heat treated. First off, they were sent to Brad's over at Peter's Heat Treatment. The LMAX blade over here got the highest austenizing temperature that was held at 2150 for 10 minutes. Afterwards, it was quenched, fully hardened. It went straight into the liquid nitrogen for four hours. There was no snap temper. The first temper on this guy was 350 degrees Fahrenheit, followed by a 400 degree Fahrenheit temper, which means it must have been a little too hard. Uh, so that ended up 62-63. That overshot the goal of 61 
62, but it is what it is. The S35VN and the CPM154 actually got the same heat treatment. These were held at 1950 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. They were quenched, fully hardened, and afterwards they were given the same liquid nitrogen as the LMAX for four hours, followed by two 300 degree Fahrenheit tempers. That left us with 61 HRC on the S35VN, which ended up the softest, and that left us with 62 HRC on the CPM154. So very, very interesting stuff. So let's talk about the testing and what the goal is in mind for this. First off, toughness is a very, very broad spectrum of stuff. There's all different kinds of toughness. You've got impact toughness, et cetera, et cetera. We want to focus on the edge stability of steel. I'm never really interested in how well something is going to pry because that takes away its ability to take and hold a killer edge. So we're not interested in that stuff per se. Speaking about edges, it's time we talk about the geometry on these guys right here. So the cutting geometry on these is not going to be as good as one of my finished knives. All right. Now, the first off, the reason for that is we're testing toughness. We're not testing how well it's going to cut, etc. Because we have a 17 degree per side bevel on there, but that means meaningless because you also have to realize what the thickness is behind the edge. So on all of these, we were shooting for about 25 thousandths behind the edge, which is pretty beefy. And not as beefy as the Cold Steel SRK, of course. This one right here was at uh, 55,000, so that's just really thick, really, really thick. But with these guys right here, we're about half of that, essentially. And I feel like 25 to 30 thousandths is where you want to be for maybe a, a rough use. But in all reality, we're actually about 27, 28 thousandths as we measured with the calipers. So on average, each of these blades is about 27, 28 thousandths behind the edge. So that should be interesting. We'll do some pretty destructive tests here, though, with these guys. I don't think these blades will survive, but we'll see what we can learn about it. The goal with the testing here is that we're going to start small, and we're going to ramp it up so we can see at what point they fail. If we just go balls to the walls right away, they'll all break, and we won't know anything. So the idea is that we will start with the hotel pan that I tested the Nitro V on. All right. This blade I tested, Nitro V on the hotel pan, whacked it a few times, saw how stable the edge was, uh, cutting paper. We'll do that with these knives as well. So yeah, then we'll test on the aluminum, the rod of truth, and we'll see what happens from there. I know a lot of people, they give me shit about how aluminum's not that hard. Yeah, go put a crazy good edge on your knife and uh, go hammer through some aluminum and see what happens. It's going to damage your edge pretty much. Uh, from there, after they survive that test, we're going to go ahead and try it on this here nail. Got a nice hardened steel nail, nail here. Uh, next test will be a bigger nail. Yeah, we'll hammer it through this guy right here until their inevitable demise, if they survive, will uh, basically kill these blades on the Jesus nail here. Uh, this is the one that unfortunately KO'd the SRK, a really uh, well-respected tough knife. This is how it failed actually up close. You could see it failed right there at that transition point. See right how that failed there, just ba bow, just like that. And yeah, you can look at there at the grain. The camera's not in focus, but you know it's very fine. Looks like fine sugar. There's nothing that you can see there. Just a little dirt there. That's why that looks like it's kind of mushy. But yeah, fine grain. I think it's just the design more than the steel. The steel actually did a really good job on the edge, but just the uh, the design there with uh, hidden tang. I, I think that's what led it to failure. Just want to clarify that. I'm not designing knives like this right here. The 25,000s behind the edge is way too thick. I don't like that. But some people, they would appreciate something like that because it would be more durable than the 10,000s we have on this Vanix knife right here. The problem with that is, is that 25, 20,000s doesn't cut very good. And so I'm not interested in knives like that with my Sport Trapper series. And to kind of iterate that for you, we could see this carrot. You can hear that kunk. That could chunk as that's cutting. It doesn't cut as well as this Nitro V knife. You can hear it's not breaking the carrot. Little things that you can't really tell. It's just, you can hear it splitting the carrot a lot more. So the thinner knife is superior, I feel like, if you can get away with it. And some of that is, uh, I feel like most of that actually is going to be how it's being used. So I'm selling the Sport Trapper to a certain user. It's not going to please everybody. You better believe we're going to make some really hardcore knives. This right here is going to be the Super Trapper. And you can see we're about quarter inch thick on this guy right here. This is 01 steel. We'll play around with that. And we've got another one just under quarter inch thick. 
and this is an 8670. So yeah, we are going to be making some heavy duty knives as well, but you just got to understand the heavy duty knife isn't going to do what the sport knife is going to do. So a sport trapper isn't going to do what a super trapper is, and a super trapper isn't going to, it's, it's geometry. It's all geometry. That's all it comes back to. It's not witchcraft. That's just what it comes down to, and it's user dependent, so it depends on how they're being used. So it's not rocket surgery, but you'd be surprised. I see people, they use the wrong tool for the job a lot of the time, you know. And yeah, as far as using the SRK as the wrong tool for the job, hey, they market this as a super duper survival knife, and I didn't do anything extreme that a lot of other channels didn't do with this guy, so give me a fucking break. I also want to add that the failure point on the, for the sport trappers is going to be actually, it'll fail on this right here. The failure point for this is going to be, uh, it'll pass the hotel pan, but it won't pass this. In order to pass this aluminum rod test, we need to get about 20 thousandths to 15 thousandths behind the edge, it seems. Or 10 thousandths, but convex. So that 52100 knife I tested with the rod of truth, that one was actually pretty convex. Once we flat ground that out to 10 thousandths, it failed this test. So, just got to pick and choose. Alright, so let's kind of show you guys where the sharpness is on these. First off, for the edge finish that we did, we did a 120 grit belt uh, finish on the bevel, followed by cleaning up with a 1000 grit ceramic, and then fully deburred off the 1 micron diamond. So we're going to go ahead and give that a check using just white printer paper. Just a standard test here. This is LMAX. Just an okay edge on there, nothing insane. Followed by, this is going to be CPM 154. Alright, another factory edge. This is very common to an edge you're going to find on your factory knives. That factory sharpness, that blend of toothiness. A very aggressive edge. This is going to be the S35V in here. So we can see we're all at about similar levels of sharpness there. So we'll get this paper out of the way, and we'll follow through with the testing and see how well these do when we whack them on something hard. Station here, we're whacking it here on the hotel pan. CPM 154. All right, we'll check the edge here. A little bit of rolling there. Let's go ahead and check with the flashlight. Let's see what we have here. Pretty tough, minimal damage there at the apex, checking with the light. So now we're going to move to the LMAX blade right here. And let's check with the light. Doesn't feel like it did much. Actually, it looks like we have less damage with the LMAX at 62.63. That's pretty impressive. So here we have S35BN. We're going to give this a few wax. Check the edge here with the flashlight. We'll have to give you guys a close-up. Similar damage, if not a little bit more, than the uh, uh, CPM-154. None of these blades look like they've chipped, but it looks like we've got a little deformation at the apex here. More on S35VN than CPM-154, and it looks like we have less deformations on this steel right here. All right, so we're going to grab a fresh sheet of paper, and you'll remember we started with uh, 154 CM, sorry, CPM 154. This is a powdered steel version of 154 CM. You guys can go look all that stuff up. I won't give you the alloy specs or anything. We're cutting really the same. There's a little bit of a deformation right here. We'll try to get a close-up later. But yeah, wasn't enough to really affect it there. Again, we are at 25,000 behind the edge with a 17 degree per side. This is the LMAX. We'll get a fresh sheet of paper for that. We'll toss that aside. We'll clean up the mess later. And this one looked like it took the less damage out of all of these so far. But it also seems like we've got a little bit of snagging there. Huh. Clean that off. Let me give that a second look because that's not cutting on the paper as well. Yeah, it just looks like there's not as much glints there looking back at me when I shine the light directly at the apex. So that's interesting. But yeah, we definitely are not cutting as clean as we originally were. Get the paper out of the way. Now, last but not least, we have the S35VN, and we'll check this guy out here. Yeah. 
and it looks like, in my opinion, I'll say that S35VN looks like it did the worst on this uh, edge testing. Does that mean S35VN is a horrible steel? Hell no, that's not what this test is about. We're just kind of exploring some stuff. So at 61 HRC, S35VN was not as stable as the other two. Uh, looks like from the testing here that CPM 154, while it looks like we had a little bit more blunting on the apex with the actual paper cutting testing, it might be the cleanest cutter. But at the same time, I've got a little ding right there. It's not a chip. None of these knives chipped, but they have little deformations on there from whacking on the metal. But it seemed like I couldn't visualize any deformation on the LMAX there. So, huh, it looks like LMAX wins this round, followed by CPM 154 and S35VN came in last. So yeah, I basically just put a permanent marker on these guys, and we should have done that in the beginning, but here we are, okay? And I have these kind of arranged on how well they did, and LMAX did the best, and so I'm very surprised by that. It's the hardest steel. It has the most carbide volume, but it actually did the best. You know, it held its edge better. These two over here, they seem to roll a lot more. And I'm sure that when we get to this other testing that we have here, I mean, that will definitely come in handy for these steels here once we push the limits of it. But it looks like LMAX is more edge stable on the hotel pan. And I like the hotel pan test too because it's actually a more realistic test. Because in the real world, you're using your knife and you accidentally hit something hard and it either blunts it, chips it, rolls it, there's always going to be something that happens, but usually the best steel, the toughest steel, is where nothing happens to the, your apex. It's still good to go, and you don't even notice it. And so that's the idea with that hotel pan test is it's kind of a more realistic, I feel like, test. These nail stuff, you know, you don't really run into things where you're doing stuff like that in the real world. It's just kind of something goofy, something fun, you know, to, to test and see what, what's the strongest or the toughest or blah, 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 whatever. But yeah, just interested that LMAX did so good on the little stupid hotel pan test there. And yeah, stay tuned on this channel. We'll continue the testing here and we'll check some stuff out. Who knows, maybe we'll do a tip test as well. I didn't really have the idea of maybe doing a tip testing uh, thing, but we, we could see which one will be, uh, I, I don't know, which one will hold its tip better for some prying and, and stupid shit like that. All right, take it easy, guys. Peace out.